The Strategikon was a Romano-Byzantine military manual, probably dating to the late 6th century AD. It was possibly written by Emperor Maurice, or an anonymous author who then attributed it to Maurice. Some scholars argue that it was written later, in the 8th or 9th centuries, and then attributed backward in time. Here I'm going to go with the 6th century authorship. Let's now look at a short passage and see what we can get out of it. Cavalrymen should have hooded coats of mail reaching to their ankles, which can be caught up by thongs and rings, along with carrying cases. Helmets with small plumes on top, bows suited to the strength of each man, cases broad enough so that when necessary they can fit the strong bows in them with spare bowstrings in their saddlebags, quivers with covers holding about 30 or 40 arrows, in their baldrics small files and awls, cavalry lances of the avar type with leather thongs in the middle of the shaft and with pennons, swords, round neck pieces of the avar type made with linen fringes outside and wool inside. Young men unskilled with the bow should have lances and shields. It is not a bad idea for the bucalari to make use of iron gauntlets and small tassels hanging from the back straps and the breast straps of the horses, as well as small pennons hanging from their own shoulders over the coats of mail. For the more handsome the soldier is in his armament, the more confidence he gains in himself and the more fear he inspires in the enemy. The horses, especially those of the officers and the other special troops, in particular those in the front ranks of the battle line, should have protective pieces of iron armor above their heads and breastplates of iron or felt, or else breast and neck coverings such as the Avars use. Now on the surface, this looks like just a list of how Romano-Byzantine cavalrymen in the 6th century should be equipped, but there's more to this passage than just a list of weapons and armor. Let's think of the implications. Firstly, while the army described in the Strategikon was still a professional force, it's clear that ideal and practice didn't always match. The very detailed list of gear suggests that Romano-Byzantine armies might have the resources and organization to equip their troops to a uniform and high quality, and the author clearly knew the impact of psychological warfare in his claim here. But this was the ideal, and notice how compromises have to be made. It seems that horse armor wasn't always possible, so only the front ranks were expected to have these. And elsewhere in the Strategikon, the author recommends that heavy infantrymen should all be armored if possible, but if not, then only the first two ranks. In fact, littered throughout the Strategikon are lots of recommendations followed up by very specific ways to compromise. Bottom lines, such as the bare minimum number of armored men, or what exactly to do when there isn't enough horse fodder. This all paints a picture of a professional, proud force that knew its limitations and knew how to compromise. Was this a uniquely Romano-Byzantine problem, given the multiple threats it had to face? Or had Roman armies always had to struggle with this, yet made do? Think about how whole armies were raised from scratch during the war with Hannibal, or how the Vindolanda tablets paint a picture of understrength forces struggling with the cold. Maybe in that sense, the army of the Strategikon was not so different. It may do as Roman armies had always done. Secondly, this was a force that was evolving. Notice how in our passage, the Avars are mentioned three times. Now the army described in the Strategikon would still be recognizable to a Roman soldier from the 4th or 5th centuries, since familiar units and terms such as the Bucalari here and Federati and Draconari elsewhere are mentioned, but it was also taking on a lot of Central Asian influence, something that had been actually ongoing since the early 6th century. Think about how Procopius described the standard cavalryman of his day as an armored horse archer, which is basically the same type of soldier described in our passage here, but with consciously Avar influences. If the Strategikon does in fact date to the late 6th century, this right here is not only a snapshot of the Romano-Byzantine military in transition, it's also the last glimpse of a recognizably late Roman military, because this late Roman military tradition would not survive the upheavals of the 7th century under the emperors Phocas and Heraclius. The next set of major Byzantine military manuals, written by the Macedonian emperors, describe a very different kind of military. In other words, the Strategikon gives us a final glimpse of an army with very clear direct ties to the ancient world, but was about to evolve into something else. 
But then, given how armies are always evolving anyway, does it even make sense to hold on to a divide between the ancient and medieval worlds? Hadn't the Roman military always been good at evolving and adapting? So was the Romano-Byzantine army of the 6th century in fact actually quite Roman? Were later Byzantine armies in fact still operating in this Roman tradition of evolution? When looking at texts then, it's important not only to fit them into a wider context, but to think about implications, ask yourself questions, and see where they lead you. Anyway, that does it for our short text analysis. Thanks for watching.